Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to set up a wireless uplink with Unify access points. Now what wireless uplink is, is a feature basically to kind of uh, wirelessly extend your network between access points. Basically it works just like a wireless extender. One side is going to receive a wireless signal from an upstream access point and then just rebroadcast that out. Now a few uh, common questions that I hear about this is can you just use a Unify access point as a wireless extender and no you cannot. The upstream access point has to be a Unify access point as well so both have to be a Unify AP to use the wireless uplink feature. If you need a wireless extender those are also available but they're not from Unify. A couple of other things there's some compatibility uh, not really issues but there's a compatibility matrix for which access points are compatible with uh, which other access points for this feature which I will show you but let's kind of just overview this um, just in case it could be a little vague so let's bring up the whiteboard here alright so I kinda had to reteach myself how to use this there because Windows 10 I guess in an update changed the way their drawing application works so now we have Microsoft whiteboard which is brand new to me this is going to be interesting, but anyways, so typically what you would have is your regular home router or whatever, probably not wireless if you're using a Unify access point, but anyways, you'll have one access point, possibly two access points, both wired to either your router or your switch, and somewhere on this network you will have your Unify controller, be it an always-on server or maybe you just used a controller just to set it up, I don't know. But this wireless access point feature, what it allows you to do is actually get rid of one of the uplinks for your access point. And what you can do is you can just connect it into a PoE injector and directly into the wall. So as you can see, there is no hard line to the rest of your network, but it does require an upstream AP. And what I mean by an upstream AP is it requires an access point that is hardwired into your network. So for example, your one upstream access point connected to your router and now your downstream one which is only connected into a PoE injector so really all that this downstream AP is doing is getting power and what's going to happen is these two are going to establish a wireless uplink so they are communicating just like they had a cable between them and then your downstream access point is going to broadcast its networks like normal and your upstream one will as well so this is very useful if you have like a large house but you don't want to run um, a wire all the way through it or a wire from your upstairs to your downstairs just to get some wireless signal down there. But this is kind of like a last resort setting and it will tell you or at least Unify will tell you that um, you shouldn't use this wireless uplink feature unless there is no other option because the performance is pretty bad. I'm not going to say bad, it's good enough to use. If all you need is signal and you're not using it for very much at all, then by all means use this feature. I actually use it in the house I'm in right now because I don't want to run a cable all the way downstairs. But all I need to do is watch Netflix or browse the internet. I don't need any kind of performance. I'm not downloading large files down there and I'm certainly not gaming. If you plan to game in another room and you want to run a wireless uplink, I would think twice because with gaming, wired is king you always want to be hardwired into the network and this wireless uplink is going to not only degrade the performance of this access point that you're wirelessly uplinking but it's also going to degrade the performance of your primary access point as well because now it is communicating on another channel and kind of using its uh, brain power if you will to communicate downstream to another AP. So enough drawing let's kind of just get after the configuration of this um, actually, this is going to be a little interesting, it's going to look a little weird because I'm going to be using my actual home uh, Unify for this demonstration. So there's going to be a lot on the screen that's blurred out for hopefully obvious reasons, but I don't really want everybody seeing my entire home network. But I don't have two uh, PoE injectors lying around, so I'm not able to actually demonstrate this all in one room. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to designate our upstream access point or the one that is hardwired in. Now we're going to ignore the two that are blurred out to the left and we're only going to be concerned with this one right here. Now the one to the right of that is disconnected, I'm not worried about that right now. 
But the setting that you need to look for in this access point, let's get rid of those things. It's going to be under the config and it will be under radios. Now under both the 2G and the 5G radios, there is this option that says allow meshing from other access points. This is what you want to have enabled on your upstream wired device. The one that is existing, the one that has the best performance. Because the feature that we're going to enable on the downstream one is going to be under wireless uplinks. And this says allow meshing to another access point. And then you also have manually configure the uplink priorities. This is what we'll configure on the downstream, so we're not going to worry about that right now. What we want to enable on our existing access point is this allow meshing from other access points. So other access points are going to ask this one for meshing. Now the second thing we're going to want to do is discover our access point that we want to kind of use as the extender, if you will. So it actually, I don't think it has to be connected first. I do believe that if you were just to plug it in, it would look for this other access point to adopt it. And actually, you know what? We're going to test that right now because I haven't tried that. Um, I've heard that it works, but I've never actually seen it work. So we'll all, what we're going to do here is we're just going to plug in our new access point to uh, PoE power, and I'm going to initiate a reset on it. All right, so it's been about five minutes since I did that reset and tried to all right, so that feature actually did work. Now, this um, is kind of some uncharted territory for me, and I believe it's after you have this set up. I'm not really sure. I tried this about three times before, and it did not work for me at all, but this just popped up. It says, pending adoption, wireless. That means that it is not wired into your network. This access point has no physical connection to the network whatsoever, but when it was coming online, it started looking for an access point that it could mesh to, it found ours that we configured the meshing on and now it is trying to adopt to the controller without even being connected to the network now if you try it like that it probably won't work just because like i said i've tried it a couple times before and it's really it's hit or miss um, i wasn't able to get it before right now but it's it's working right there i have not plugged this into uh, my network at all so you can see that works. Typically what you want to do is you want to take the normal route of um, of plugging it into the network first, adopting it, and then unplugging it, which I will show you those steps as well. So I just wanted to see if this works. So we can click on it and click adopt, and now it is adopting it. And it should say that it is connected wirelessly. And also just to kind of, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but when, when I did do that reset and unplugged it and all of that stuff, it did take about five minutes for it to show up on the controller. So I didn't think it was working again there for a bit, but I waited and waited and it finally did pop up. So if you are trying to do it that way, just be a little bit patient. Um, I'm a little impatient, so I started thinking it wasn't working, but it finally did. And I just saw the light go out, so that's a good sign. Okay, and we just moved into the provisioning state, so we have actually connected to this access point, and it is connected, and it's now getting its configuration pushed. And I will take, or, and I will say that that took about mm, three minutes for it to move from adopting to provisioning. All right, and there it is. It is complete. If we click on it, we can configure it. Um, let's see what uh, wireless lands. Well. I'm going to see what wireless lands I have on it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect my phone to one of those and just see what kind of performance we get. And if we actually, if we go to the wireless uplinks tab, we can kind of see the signal strength. So right now we have a signal strength of 47%, which is not great. Typically you want a signal strength of over 80% for it to be really worth your while. Um, also, I should mention that the amount of time that it took between it uh, starting to provision and it finishing was actually quite a lot. It was about seven minutes that I sat here. And I was trying to get my uh, screen capture to work for my phone, but I could not download the correct app, couldn't get it working. So you're just going to have to take my word on the speed that I'm getting right now, which is not exactly uh, great. So with this wirelessly uplinked AP, I am getting about 24 megabits down and 24 megabits up. Well, looks like it kind of jumped to 25. So about 24 megabits and my internet connection is a 100 megabit symmetrical so i should be getting 100 up 100 down if i was right there at the uh, modem so yeah we are getting about 25 percent of the overall internet speed being wirelessly uplinked however i am roughly i would probably say 70 feet from 
the other access point which is in the same room as the modem and the router and there is one uh, two three four walls between me and there and three rooms so right now I'm in the furthest point of this house which is a back bedroom and I have a bathroom and a dining room and a kitchen between me and the access point and the modem and that's a 47 percent signal and I'm getting 25 megabits a second so it is usable. If you wanted to watch Netflix back here and just for some reason couldn't get the wireless signal on your phone all the way back here, then it's perfectly fine. But for gaming, um, yeah, my latency is about 44 meg on a speed test, and I guarantee you it would be all over the place if I tried to play a game. So now that that's all set up, I'm going to go ahead and forget this device, and I'm going to go through the other steps uh, to get this working. Now, if you did follow along up to this point and got it working wirelessly already, then that's good you can go ahead and stop the video however if you tried it and it didn't work let me show you the other way that uh, you would do this so I'm gonna go ahead and go down here to um, forget and remove and that's gonna wipe out all the configurations of that device all right now while I'm waiting for that to come back online what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect it into my actual wired network and I know I just told you that I'm in the furthest bedroom of my house and I don't have a wire ran all the way back here. Well, that's kind of halfway a lie. I do have a uh, power line adapter, which is connecting directly into the router on the other side of the house. So technically this is a part of the wired network, but not really. So the plan here is that we're going to connect this to the wired network, which I just did, and then we're going to discover it normally, like you normally would any other additional access point uh, with your Unify controller. But then once it's discovered, adopted, and configured, we're just going to unplug the power. Or I'm sorry, we're not going to unplug the power. We're going to unplug its LAN connection. And then that's how we're going to get it to go wireless. So I'm just going to wait for it to pop up here for adoption on the wired network. And there it is. You see, we're pending adoption again, this time not wirelessly because it's part of the wired network. So let's go ahead, click on it and adopt. Now I'm going to go ahead and start a stopwatch here. We're about, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds in already still adopting. All right. And we just moved to provisioning. All right. And it looks like we are provisioned and that actually only took a little over a minute, probably about two minutes uh, total to get through adopting and provisioning that time. So it actually took a lot less time than it did when we were adopting it wirelessly. So now we can just go in there, go to the configure, we can go down to wireless uplinks, make sure that allow meshing to another access point is selected, and we can hit apply on that, and that's going to cue the change, and go back to radios and disable um, allow meshing from other access points. Let's go ahead and cue those changes and apply. And it looks like that was successful. So now what we can do is we can move move down back to here, make sure that is still going. And we can um, manually configure the priorities. However, every time I go in here, it doesn't actually show them. So I think it has to discover them wirelessly first. I haven't actually messed with that because I only have one um, upstream access point. You can have multiple upstream access points. And sometimes, um, from what I've read, the automatic detection kind of gets a little wonky. It might not select the most powerful one, so you can go in here and manually change it. But it's not an issue if you only have one option. So we're going to leave that off and just hit apply again just to be safe. And now at this point, we can disconnect um, our access point from the wired network. All right, so I just unplugged it, and it is now only on with PoE. There is no network connection at all, and we should be able to see it fall off, and it should enter a state called isolated if it can connect back um, to our main access point. Okay, and I just realized that I actually disconnected it while it was provisioning. That is not a thing you want to do, so now I, I had to connect it back. Now I am disconnecting it. Now it's only on power. And I'm just going to refresh the page a couple times until I see it drop off. All right, so there we go. And that actually took a while, um, well over a minute for it to show that the heartbeat was missed. Now, usually it doesn't go into this state. Okay, there it goes. So it went into the state of heartbeat missed, which just means that like it was gone almost like it was disconnected from the network. But now it has entered the state called isolated. That is the state that you want um, you want to see. So that means that it knows that it exists and now it is establishing that wireless uplink. So the isolated state just means that the controller knows that it is still out there and that it is still powered on, but it is not connected to the main wired network. It is isolated on its own island. 
Now if I refresh again, we should have a different state. Right now, yep, it says that it's connected, but if we actually click on it and get rid of these errors, um, it should say connected wireless. I don't know why it doesn't, but let's go down to wireless uplinks, and it says there are no uplinks for this device. So this is actually very weird. I don't know how or why um, it is saying that it is regularly connected without a wireless uplink because that is impossible. It is it does not have a wireless uplink at all. Let me just get on my phone here and uh, try it out, see if I can even see a network on it. And I can see the wireless network that I connected to last time. All right, and I'm actually connected to the internet. I'm, I'm getting a 22 meg um, up and down right now. So, I mean, a little worse than last time, but that has to do, I'm sure, with where I threw down the access point or the temperature of the house. That's well within a margin of error that those two two or three megabits that i lost between this test and the last test those don't really mean anything it's still just as terrible however it is very interesting to me that it just says uh oh well there it goes now that i refreshed it a million times it says connected wireless that's what we're looking for it's it i knew i mean i knew it wasn't connected to the wired network before because it physically was not but now it says connected wireless, that's what you want to see. And if we go down to wireless uplinks, we should see, yep, it'll tell you the name of the access point that it is uplinked to, the channel, and the signal. And actually, it has 50% signal this time, as opposed to 47% last time. So we have a slightly better signal, but lower speed. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But anyways, that is how you establish the wireless uplink on these devices. Like I said, it's kind of a um, last ditch effort if you don't have any other option. Um, you're not going to want to just indefinitely wirelessly uplink all of your APs. Your performance would be pretty terrible. But for something that's kind of temporary or for something that doesn't really need a whole lot of performance, uh, it's not a bad option. I use it all the time. So um, if you have any questions or issues, leave it in the comments below. Hopefully this helped you out a bit. I've seen a few comments kind of relating or alluding to this uh, feature that they have. So I kind of wanted to make this video and just show you that you can wirelessly uplink it over, I mean, in my case, this is over the course of an entire house about 70 feet away from the other access point, but your mileage may vary. All houses are different. All walls have a different thickness and block more signal than others. So um, like I said, you want you want a, about an 80% signal uh, ratio between your two access points for it to really you know, be worthwhile. But hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching this video. Uh, happy networking.